Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey, and today we are going to be discussing SARMs and TRT. In particular, we're going to be looking over a hypothesis of mine that's more or less supporting research into adding SARMs at low dosages into a TRT regimen. So the reason for this is because we know that TRT in hypogonadal men is quite beneficial. However, in the case of someone with an enlarged prostate, already suffering from prostatic issues, this could be an issue as it could exacerbate these symptoms. This would be further exacerbated in someone with established prostate cancer. So why do I think SARMs have a place in TRT? While I'm not supporting their use until more scientific data is out demonstrating how SARMs could benefit someone on TRT, however, if we look at the pharmacodynamics, we know that SARMs ideally should have full agonist abilities at tissues like the muscle and be a weak antagonist in tissues like the prostate. We have data that demonstrates this effect in intact controls demonstrating a decrease in prostate size and furthermore in castrated rats showing only a mild increase in prostate size. Furthermore, the reason for this video is to perhaps spark interest into the use of SARMs in TRT, and in particular, low dosages of them. Again, I'm not supporting their use yet until there is enough research to demonstrate that they are effective in testosterone replacement therapy. But if we go back to research done on Osterine, we can see that in this table above, that while SARMs in, at a low dose actually caused a reduction in PSA, if they are used at too high a dose, there is not a significant reduction in PSA, as demonstrated by the p-value being 0.518 in the SARM 3 mg a day group. Again, this was demonstrated in the case of LGD, where a dose of 0.1 mg a day actually caused a reduction in PSA, whilst 1 mg and 0.3 mg a day did not cause much of a reduction. So this could potentially suggest that in individuals using TRT with prostate issues, the SARMs would prevent some of the unwanted side effects that we do have from TRT. Again, this might be beneficial in someone who gets androgenic alopecia from TRT. But the reason it would have to be an actual SARM is, is because in my previous video looking at AC262, we found that it was a weak agonist in both tissues, meaning that in the presence of something like testosterone in muscle cells, it might actually work as a weak antagonist, therefore not giving the benefit that most individuals want. But again, you might not want that additional muscle mass, but in elderly individuals suffering from sarcopenia, having a weak antagonist is not ideal. But in the case of typical SARMs like Osterine and LGD that have full agonist abilities at these tissues, they in theory wouldn't inhibit the anabolic activity of testosterone and might add additional anabolic effects, whilst also potentially reducing androgenic side effects. But remember, the dose of the SARM should be very low in this instant as too high a dose has been shown to not have a significant change on PSA levels. However, in the case of someone using high doses of testosterone in the presence of the high doses of these androgens, it might actually further enhance this weak antagonist ability. Even at a higher dose, we don't have data to support this, but it might be the case. This approach, however, does not help with the erythropoietic side effects of testosterone as SARMs themselves have been shown to increase hematocrit in young healthy males, and you could argue that this would exacerbate those side effects. However, we don't know. The reason again that I'm looking at a SARM is because finasteride and other 5-alpha reductase inhibitors have fallen out of favor due to their side effects, and SARMs tend to have quite a high level of acceptability in the anabolic steroid world, so this could potentially replace the need for something like finasteride in someone who is worried about androgenic side effects. So in summary, 
It would be interesting if we have research in the future showing the use of a low-dose arm with TRT and how it prevents some of these androgenic side effects. And I'd be interested to know if any of you have experimented with adding a SARM or low-dose SARM on a steroid cycle and whether or not it reduces the androgenic side effects you would typically get from that cycle. Again, it's all hypothetical, but I thought it was an interesting topic nonetheless. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.